Hi, my name is Max Flower. I'm here with Liz Clayman of Fox Business Network. We're at the Berkshire Hathaway meeting. She does a lot of reporting on, on business news, but today she's going to tell us about her philanthropic work. Liz. Well, actually, it's grown as the years go by. And when I come to events like this, uh, you see that Warren Buffett's giving his money away and Bill Gates and Charlie Munger, and they're so generous. It, it, it almost feeds upon itself. And you start to think, I, I've got to do more too. But over the past couple of years, I've gotten involved in a couple of really important endeavors. My biggest one that I give time and money to is called buildinghomesforheroes.org. And what we do, and it's so exciting and fascinating, is we built from the ground up custom tricked out homes that are co totally mortgage free for our most severely disabled soldiers returning from Iraq and Afghanistan. What does that mean? That means when they come back with not one, sometimes two, three amputations, they come home to a home that is built to their specifications and their needs mortgage free. It's the least we can do, but I I've worked so hard to get big donors in. I've given myself, I do the New York City Triathlon every year and raise about fifty dollars to $70,000 a pop. It's always a big effort. And all in now, I think that I've helped raise about nine to $10 million for buildinghomesforheroes.org. Wow, yeah. outstanding. And and what a cause. It warms my heart. Yes. And, and um, is there, are there any other philanthropic projects that you'd like to work on in the future? I'm on a fundraising team for my university. I went public school all the way. I'm a real supporter of public schools. And I went to UC Berkeley, which of course is part of the University of California system. And the state, when it fell into arrears and had real problems during the financial crisis, had to cut its donations to the UC system and certainly to UC Berkeley. And I believe that so much of my success is from the collective experience I had at Cal, at UC Berkeley. So I work with this team in New York of Cal alums, and we raise money so that kids who can't afford fancy pants private education or the hoity-toity universities can still go and get a public school education. So we work really hard on that. And there are a lot of people like that. I live in Los Angeles, and I know several people from Cal. They're great people. They're doing great things. You're one of those people. And uh, it's a great school. It's one of the best in California and one of the best in the country. It's just ranked third or fourth worldwide by an organization that looks at all different metrics. And so I look at, I look at it now and I say, you know what, I, I couldn't get it accepted in there today probably, but back when, I, and I'm not so young anymore, but back when I was applying, Cal was the holy grail for me. I really wanted to go to Berkeley and I had that opportunity and now I want to give it to other kids. You know, we had a family of five. We also grew up privileged, but you know, my dad had at one point four kids in school at the same time. Four, four of us went to the UC system. My sister went to Santa Barbara, one sister went to UCLA, and two of us went to Berkeley, and I've got to be able to pay it forward in that way. So we've raised a good chunk of change to help others go to Berkeley. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing what you're doing. Now, earlier you mentioned Iron Man and Iron Man. How, how, tell us a little bit about that. Okay. I woke up one day in 2005 and said, I need to do something to crack out of we all grow into these molds and, and routines, you know, go to work, work out, go home, deal with the kids. And I thought, I need to do something different. Well, the one thing I was told I could never do, because I was born with slight curvature of the spine, scoliosis, was they said, you'll do anything, you just won't run long distances. And I thought, let me prove them wrong. So I trained for the New York City Marathon, and I completed it in 2005. After that, I thought, don't need to do that again. So no more marathons, but I thought, let me do the New York City Triathlon and use it as a way to raise money for a, a cause that I care about, buildinghomesforheroes.org. So I, I've done seven triathlons in New York City. Wow. You just completely crushed me. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was a big deal that I was riding my bike from Marina Del Rey up to Santa Monica <laughs> to do yoga and then to the Santa Monica steps and then back to the marina. Yeah, and then and coffee I, in between. And I've raised no money for anyone. <laughs> you can do it. Trust me, if I could do it, you could do it. And by the way, folks, don't sit there, oh, she's so great. I'm not an athlete. But I did it. <laughs> and you are an athlete now. <laughs> and speaking of being an athlete, with your amazingly busy schedule, uh, what do you? What are some things that you do to maintain your health? And um, uh, what are some small little secrets to success that you have? Okay, n nobody's going to like this, but I don't drink alcohol at all. I I don't drink alcohol, nothing bad, drugs, nothing like that. And here's why. It's quite 
into self-preservation. That's really all it's about. If you're going to wake up every day and be in this for the long haul, and the race of living a, a life of achievement, and helping others, and helping yourself, and helping your family, and I've got two little kids, you just don't want to eat bad things, and you don't want to bring bad things into your system. So I'm a pretty clean eater. I love chocolate. Um, that's a little bit of a problem, but I, I just try and avoid things that are going to slow me down. Try and get seven hours of sleep. Try and read a lot. Always nonfiction. I don't really have a lot of time to read, so when I read, it's nonfiction. I'll, I'll read anything I can get my hands on. Whether it's the Smithsonian or, or some random magazine that's in the doctor's office, you're always going to learn a little bit of something new. And as long as you maintain that curiosity of life, you're going to go places, kid. Well, I'd like to say that... Uh, I forgot what I was going to say, but what I was I overwhelmed also, him that much. Yes. <laughs> what I was also going to say is that uh, your self. I guess what I was going to say is that uh, it's. I'm glad that you keep your mind fresh, and that overall, I'd have to say your self pre preservation is going fantastically. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of formaldehyde. No, I'm kidding. But listen, my father was a surgeon, and he always said, you know, everything that you do. Every night out late or every bad thing you put in your body, you know, just remember there's a, there's a compiling effect. You want to make sure, if you really love life, that you just, everything in moderation. It's so true. Now, I know that you're in a hurry, and so let me just say that uh, one thing I do uh, is what I call mastering the basics, which is like eating well reading good things, yep. just keep taking good care of my body. I'm also a little bit of a, a problem with chocolate as well. <laughs> but what I've got to say about you, Liz, every time I've seen you, uh, you're always very considerate, always very thoughtful, very pleasant. And so you're doing great things with your philanthropic work. You're doing great things in your professional career. But every day, every time I see you, you're 100%. And so right. keep up the great work. And I know that you'll inspire others at home to be as much of 100% as they possibly can be. Well, Max is an inspiration. Yay. And thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. I appreciate your time. Anytime. Keep up the great work. 